everybody. Welcome back to another midweek episode. So last week, one of the grandmas here at church had reached out to me with a concern. Her 10-year-old granddaughter had gotten into an argument about whether God was real or not. And as we talked through that, I came to learn that it wasn't that her granddaughter didn't believe that God was real, but she had a friend who told her, well, I I don't think that God is real. So how do we respond to moments like that, to questions like that, that maybe our kids ask or, or maybe even somebody else in our life is asking? I want to process that with you in the way that I processed it last week with this member of our congregation. And the first step was just to pause and say, listen to where this person is at. Ask them, well, why don't you think that God is real? What are the reasons that they give? I mean, maybe it's because they were taught about Santa or the Easter bunny, and so they see Jesus in the same way. Well, it's just a fairy tale. Or maybe it's because they've gone through a really difficult time. They've experienced intense loss in their life, and it doesn't seem like God is real. He's there to do anything to help make the situation better. So begin by listening to the other person's reasons why they don't believe God is real. Uh, But then, if there's an opportunity, shift the conversation and ask permission to be able to share why you believe that God is real. And I think that there are two different reasons that God is real. Two different ways that you can look at this. You can look at it from a creation perspective, and you can look at it from a Jesus perspective. You can look at it from a creation standpoint and simply say, how did we get to where we are now? Because there had to have been a start. Somewhere, somehow, something that set in motion the world that we live in. And what do we know about the world that we live in? First, we know that it's a world of order. You look at our bodies and down to the molecular level, things are ordered and organized so that life can exist. And even from a level of the created world around us and the rest of the universe, there is an order to things. So behind that order, there must be someone who has ordered and organized it, an intelligent being. We also live in a world that is relational. It's, it's personal. We are made to interact with each other. And so behind that, there must be a personal God. Third, we live in a world where there is a morality. There's a sense of right and wrong. There are certain decisions that people make that universally we agree that's not okay. So somehow behind that, there must be a moral being. And from a biblical perspective, all of this comes together. As we say in the creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe that God is real because of the world that we live in. Another way of approaching this conversation is to look at it from the perspective of Jesus. The reason why I believe that there is a God is because Jesus came. Jesus died. And Jesus rose again into our broken, disordered world because of the chaos of sin. Jesus stepped and he lived a life in perfect harmony with God and with others. And then 
He stepped into that chaos and he died on my behalf, on your behalf. But because he has power, ultimate power, the grave could not hold him. And three days later, Jesus came back to life and was seen by hundreds of people. There's a plethora of evidence that Jesus lived, died, and rose again. And because of that, I believe that God is real. Because guess who Jesus says that he is? The Christ, the Son of the living God. So how do you know that God is real? Maybe you'd give a different answer. And when your kids ask that question, when your friends ask that question, what answer will you be able to give them? Let's engage in those conversations. As together we make sense of life in Jesus. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you again next time.